<laughs> hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to a new episode of Clone Evolution. And today, can't even remember what I was supposed to be working on today. What was it? Oh, yeah, I was supposed to make those fire heroes. I never got around to doing it, so... Uh, despite being sober October, I'm not getting as much done as I had hoped. I think the first few days of it, I was very productive, but I'm already starting to get back into just feeling like I was before I went into sober October, so not getting enough done. Now, it kind of sucks. Uh, some people in my family got the sniffles, so now we're wondering we have to isolate because of the whole freaking thing, so hoping it's just the cold weather starting. It is like freaking winter outside already. Kind of gives you a runny nose. No, my uncle's in really bad shape again today too though, so that's where we're a little bit worried. I think if it hit him, it would hit him a little bit harder. So if he's like he's already in a compromised state. So yeah, probably gonna be doing a lot of self-isolation again just to make sure. All right, receive all. Oh yeah, while well, my memory is still working. Let's give that guy the big time flowers. Where is he? Mr. Tomahawk. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Gotta pick send all. Not gonna send everyone a hundred. I don't know what the bill for that would be. <laughs> Thousand maybe. <laughs> Now today I was just watching some other video game news. Some people are doing a big panel about the Intellivision Amico. And I figured I'd order it myself to watch it. I've been feeling so negative about a lot of things lately. And I'm starting to get a little bit more positive being sober. So I figured let's watch some of the Amico stuff. See if I can get into a bit more of a positive mood about it. Yeah, and I think I... Oh, did I really fail again? Oh my god! What the fuck? So how did that guy beat him and then he sucked in the next battle? God damn, I fucking hate the Hunger Games. Alright, more positive, more positive. <laughs> no, so that's what it was, is I tried to be more positive in the Amico video bit panel. And I was kind of surprised, because I was like, I wonder if anyone watched my Amico review, because... I was like really harsh about it. A lot of the Miko fans, if they watched it, they might hate me. <laughs> I tend to get that a lot. <laughs> oh, 145. That's cool. So yeah, I was worried that they would hate me. So I logged into the panel in the YouTube chat. And I said hi to everyone. And no one said hi back. Well, maybe one person did, I think. So I was like, oh fuck, are they going to kick me out of the YouTube room? I'll try to be nice. Not to swear or anything, big family channel, so I was like swearing free. <laughs> now I used to do a lot of like public radio at the radio station, so like I can do no swearing. It's just I don't really like it. It feels very fake talking. But yeah, whatever. So anyways, yeah, the Amico thing went on, and they actually had some good news about the Amico. So it was easy to get more positive about it. Even Tommy joined in the chat and I was like, oh shit, I shouldn't put any more comments because Tommy sees me in there, he's probably going to freak out <laughs> or at least maybe get upset, I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> then I tried to be as polite as I could and I even apologized to Tommy in the chat. And I was like, he, he wasn't responding to anyone's messages in the chat. I was like, I thought he wasn't even reading it. So <laughs> when I put an apology to him in the chat, he all of a sudden read it right away and read it out loud to the whole YouTube community. So I was like, oh, that was like super nice of him. So yeah, so hopefully a little bit of sobriety managed to help like, yeah, I noticed that like when you sober up for like a long period of time, it helps you reevaluate things. Like you tend to get into a negative mindset sometimes if you're wasted all the time. Or maybe not everyone has that. It's probably something to do with my concussion history as well. I noticed after my concussion, it was very easy to get negative about things, like even more so. It was like I already had that in my personality before, and I think the concussion brought a little bit more emphasis to it. <laughs> no, but I should be okay with the concussion symptoms now, because man, it's like it's been over two years, and I've noticed like I get quite a few days where I forget about it. I was like, sweet, like I was going on like two years of just constant agony, so it was kind of cool getting better mood, less 
less pessimistic about everything or negative. I'll still be able to rant and rave a pretty good one, but <laughs> at least I can come around in the end after a little bit of like time to rest or think about it, reevaluate. Oh boy, so yeah, I do got a little bit of a weakness going because uh, I've been eating so much less because of the quitting weed for sober October. I don't know if anyone else gets that. It's like when I quit weed, it's like I almost never get hungry anymore. It's like I can I, I ate one bologna sandwich the whole day and I wasn't even hungry. I'm like, what the fuck, right? <laughs> so I was wondering maybe I got sick and I got loss of appetite and just don't really have any other symptoms. Or it could just be from sober October. So I forced myself to eat some rice because I noticed my stomach wasn't taking it well and I was starting to get a little bit of weakness and like queasiness. So I'm like, fuck, I better eat something. Yeah, especially when I was working out too. I was like working out today, I had more energy than ever. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm not sick because I have more energy. That's the weirdest thing about these times. Eh? It's like you get the slightest symptom of something. You're like, oh God, do I have it? <laughs> Everyone's like in a panic. We've been listening to the media tell us for like, I don't know, almost a year now that we're all going to die. <laughs> it's like, yes, we're all going to die. But are we all going to die at the same time? Probably not. <laughs> Unless a meteor hits the earth. Hmm. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do, maybe tomorrow or later on the week, I'm going to do a whole positive video about the Intellivision Amico. Just to show Tommy, to prove it to him that like, Despite being like super negative and having a whole bunch of things I'd like to change It's like I still can be positive to some degree <laughs> to some <laughs> No, the, the one good news that Tommy had which I was a little bit concerned about was when he said that Well, yeah today in the, the panel he was saying that during the major league baseball season this year he had the, the new Major League Baseball game for Intellivision ready, or at least a demo, to I guess, to show off at Major League Baseball's All-Star game. So that's why I guess he hasn't been showing the baseball game, as he was saving it for the, the All-Star game. But then the whole pandemic happened, right? So then the, the All-Star game never occurred. and Because yeah, I, I always was thinking that Tommy was dodging it. He was just taking a whole bunch of money and actually not doing anything, so... This was a little bit more of like a reassurance that, hey, he actually is doing stuff. I don't know, I think it's because there's so many bad projects that would happen with video games. Well, I guess not that many. The, what was it? The, um, what was it? The, what was that thing called? The Chameleon? What was it? The, fuck, I can't even remember the name of it. Coleco Chameleon, that's it. Now that was one of my symptoms that I noticed that's really annoying about concussions. It's like, you know the, the game show Jeopardy? Where it's all about, not if you know the facts, but how fast you can access them, right? Because like, normally your brain, you know something, but you have to find it in the storage, and sometimes you're sitting there going, oh, I'm trying to remember. So that's what it's the worst part about concussions I noticed, for mine, was that recall speed was almost like ridiculously slow like it'd take 20 minutes to remember something like the name of the street that I live on or something so it was like really bad recall but I think uh, as time has been going on it's starting to speed up a little so what I was thinking I should do I should probably watch some Jeopardy and then practice doing the, the faster recall to see if I can maybe exercise my brain to get back into shape sort of thing all right won the dungeon Right, I need to make some red heroes here. What was the gene bank saying? Nothing soon, huh? Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Check the gene bank, if there's one really long. Was it 24 hours? Yep, so I'll have to clone one of these. Hopefully it's red. Yeah, red. Oh no, it's not the good red, it's green. I was thinking if it was a blue red, that's what I needed. Green is useless. It's useless to me. Okay, so what do I want to do? I'm trying to figure it out. It's like, I got to get these red heroes and then clone that guy out. Oh yeah, I have three hundreds. Right, that's sweet. 
That's actually really good news. Let's do the equipment upgrade first. Who is it that has it? Alex? I'm trying to recall. I think it is Alex. Yeah, Alex has all 110 gear except for this. So let's forge him a bigger one. Man, it's funny. It's like today, I was feeling like physically almost over the cannabis addiction. Not getting the headaches anymore and some of the other symptoms of withdrawal are pretty much gone. Not even really jonesing anymore. But then I started getting bored. I'm like, hey, let's smoke a bowl. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I'm not just going to break Sober October because I'm bored. It's like I can just get more shit done. All right, so let's see. Can I boost it to 110? Let's hope. Yeah, it's the pirate hat. That's it. I was wondering what the last one was. I should have guessed it was the pirate hat. I'd seen it already and for some reason kept forgetting. <laughs> Alright, so now Alex should be significantly stronger. But well, it almost seems like a waste because he's already super strong. <laughs> Alright, let's clone up a few heroes and consume them. Oh, did anyone see? I can't remember if it was this show or maybe a different show I was doing. But someone was telling me that they're a Miami Heat fan. I was like, I used to never like the Miami Heat because the Raptors would have trouble beating them sometimes. But we got to the point where we just started destroying them each game, so I didn't really hate them so much. Oh yeah, I remember what was too, Jimmy Butler. He almost beat us in the playoffs last year, so I kind of held a grudge against him. But now that he's playing uh, the Lakers, oh man, do I love the Heat. <laughs> they managed to, well, I shouldn't say, well, yeah, you guys have already found out the score by the time this airs. Yeah, so the Heat managed to win the game against the Lakers tonight. And I was surprised, because all the Heat's best players are sitting out. So, except for Jimmy Butler. So I was like, it's almost like the entire bench and Jimmy Butler is just slaughtering LeBron James. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't hate on LeBron James so much, but God, he's annoying. <laughs> As a Raptors fan, he eliminated us so many years. I just can't stand him. <laughs> oh yeah, I seen the pictures in the new mansion he bought. Holy shit. Talk about privilege. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I bet you if I like sat down and talked to LeBron James, I'd probably like him. It's like I love playing basketball, so <laughs> we'd have something in common. <laughs> no, when I was in elementary school, I used to play on my uh, uh, our school team. <laughs> Boy, our school teams suck. It's like uh, all the years we played, I don't think we won. A, yeah, what am I talking about? I know we didn't win a single game. It wasn't even close in any of them. And I actually remember the only moment that our team was ever winning a game. <laughs> and I still remember it to this day. Even the whole shot and everything. <laughs> no, what happened was, is uh, I was the center because I was like a foot taller than anyone else in my class, at least. Not because of age, just because everyone in my family is like super tall. Can I beat that team? It's almost the identical team to me. Let's not chance it. I fucking let my team down yesterday by getting only one win. Fuck. I should have had more. We ended up losing the fucking round because of it. Piss me off. <laughs> no, the time that we won or we didn't win, we were winning a basketball game. I was the center. I jump up and I fucking won the tip. I was like, dear God, I must have done like thousands of tips. I never won any of them. So I was like, we won the tip. <laughs> so then we had the first possession of the game. And this was like huge because we had lost the tip in every other game for every season. So we never actually had ever had a chance to even have a lead in the game. <laughs> yeah, and the problem was is our elementary school only had about 100 kids. And all the other schools we were playing against were really big schools with like a thousand kids. So our team would have like a couple people the right age and then we'd have a whole bunch of like people from way smaller grades because we didn't have enough to fill the team. And other schools they'd have so many people applying for the team that they could pick the best from all the actual age group that was supposed to be on the team. So yeah, so we would just get slaughtered. But anyways, I won the tip. I took the ball and I threw it to the point guard. I'm like, all right, we actually got it. 
and then he was doing some dribbling, going around, and then I managed to get to like the foul line, and I was open, and I'm like, man, pass it to me, I'm open, and he fucking passes it to me, I shoot it from the foul line, and it was a swish, <laughs> and you should have seen the look on the other team's face, they're like, oh, this really tall guy is going to slaughter us, and then we like basically never scored again. <laughs> They just slaughtered us, but it was fun. Like we, I got to see that look in their face. They're like, "Oh, this team's good." <laughs> that didn't last long. <laughs> yeah, has anyone else had any horror stories about playing for really shitty sports teams? <laughs> no, we had this teacher that came from a big school in Toronto, and when he came to our school, he's like, "Holy shit, your guy's school sucks!" Right? Well, he didn't say that, but he's like, "Your guy's school needs some improvement," sort of thing. <laughs> Like your morale is really low because you're like always losing at everything. <laughs> yeah, I could say his name. I believe he already passed, but uh, he was actually one of my favorite teachers in elementary school, but he hated my guts. <laughs> I kind of felt bad for him because I would always piss him off for the stuff I was doing, but I liked him. <laughs> I got to try harder to, well, I don't know. Shouldn't always be trying to impress people, right? You gotta be yourself to a certain degree. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, when that teacher came to our school, he's like, he has a plan in order to help our teams actually win something. And we're all like, how the hell is this teacher gonna get us to win an event? We suck at baseball, we suck at basketball, basically any team sport, we don't have enough players to put together a good team. So we always just suck. <laughs> But guess how he managed to do it? He actually pulled it off. He got our school a win. And you know what he did? He made the entire school sign up for the track event. <laughs> so it was like other schools would send like maybe their best track stars, like two or three guys, maybe four, maybe 10, maybe at tops, right? <laughs> but our school sent all 100 kids. <laughs> and the same thing, it's like, yeah. Uh, he had to get us all to be ready to compete in this track event. So what he did is he got the entire school to practice for the track event every day. <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was like, you know how when recess starts and like the whole school would go outside and play in elementary school? Well, he, he had it set up so just like before recess would start, the whole school would come outside early and it would be like this practice and he would get the entire school to run a lap around the cemetery and then they could come back and go for recess. <laughs> so yeah, he pulled it off. He trained the entire school. <laughs> yeah, that guy was cool. What was his name again? Rob Chadwick. He was a good guy. I hope he didn't really not die. I just heard that from other classmates that we used to be with or that it used to be in my class. Now it's making me a little sad to think that he died because man, he was such a cool guy. Now the main thing I did to piss him off was I was always skipping school and I had really bad sleep apnea but I didn't know it when I was a kid because back then they didn't even know what sleep apnea was. The game's gonna fucking crash again. I can't even do this stage. Fuck! <laughs> I guess I'll just start booting it now. God, it's so annoying. Why doesn't the game work? It's like you pay to play the game. You think it could at least work. That'd be sweet. Ah, oh, here it loaded. Sweet. Yeah, so that was funny. It's like that's how we won the track event. Is because when we went to the event, you got one point for every person from your school that finished the race. So we didn't even have to get like first place in the race. All we had to do was accumulate all those points just for finishing the race. <laughs> And I was kind of sad too because I was the only kid in the whole school I think that didn't sign up for the track team and I got an exemption medical reasons because I was actually coughing up blood actually a lot doing the fucking track and field and I don't know what it ever was like I seen the Dodgers there's no way you're coughing up blood there's nothing wrong with your lungs I'm like man when I run I can cough up and I see blood in the saliva and I can taste it like really large and then I talked to my dad about it, and he said that's actually the condition he has, too. So I must have inherited it from him. So technically I could run a lot, but I just didn't like the fucking taste of blood a lot. So I was like, God, I didn't want to do track. And just go figure, that's the only time our school ever won. <laughs> it's when they ditched me. <laughs> or I ditched them, depending how you want to look at it. 
Yeah, so what I did to piss him off, I was just skipping school all the time because I would just stay home and sleep. I couldn't figure it out why I was so tired all the time. And I realized later that it was because it was sleep apnea. I was barely sleeping at all. In hindsight, I wish I knew Rob still so I could tell him, man, it's like I finally found out why I was skipping class so much. Because even in detention, he would take me into detention for skipping school too much. And he'd be, he would grill me. He's like, man, why do you keep skipping school so much? He's like freaking out. And I was like, man, I have to stay home and sleep. I'm really tired some days. <laughs> He's like, why? Why? Aren't you going to bed on time? And I'm like, yeah, I get, my mom was actually putting us to bed even before the sun went down. <laughs> it's because, what is it, like in the summer or yeah, near the winter time, the sun goes down really early in Canada, like 6 p.m. even. Or it probably does it all over the place, not just Canada. Yeah, so he hated me over that. Well, maybe he didn't hate me, but he would always yell at me. And Oh yeah, the other time too. One time I slept in, or I was actually going to skip summer camp. Because of the sleep apnea, I snore like really loud. And all the other kids, like I know when I went to sleepovers when I was a kid, they would hate me over it and try to bully me because they didn't want to listen to my snoring. <laughs> so I was like, oh fuck, if I have to go to summer camp, everyone's going to hear me sleeping at night and I'm totally going to get bullied. But at the last minute when the, the bus was actually waiting for me, the whole class was pissed off. I like, I just gathered the courage. I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to back down to those bullies. I'm going to go to the camp and just fucking face my fears. <laughs> Yeah, and then when I got it to the school and got on the bus, the whole bus booed me. They're like, you jackass, you made us all late. <laughs> it's amazing how many times entire buses end up reaming me out. I, I, can, I can think of like four or five cases. <laughs> One time I got reamed out by a whole bus of seniors. I don't know if I told you guys that story. <laughs> Same thing happened. We went on this big bus trip for the casino. And it wasn't sleep this time. It's like uh, I was sitting at the back of the bus. And you know when they get to like a tour guide or something, they get on the bus and they tell you when to come back to the bus, right? Because you're in another country, you better not miss the bus or you'll be fucked, right? <laughs> so what do I do? I get off the bus. Well, no, the tour guide comes on. He yells everyone what time the bus is coming and I'm sitting at the back of the bus and a whole bunch of seniors around me just kept talking the whole time. So I couldn't hear what he said. So then when the tour guide was gone, I'm like, okay, I have to go ask the bus driver. Surely he knows what time. So I go and ask the bus driver and guess what he tells me? He's like, oh, he didn't listen to the guy either. He's like, but if you go inside the tour place, they'll tell you. So I go inside the tour place and they have him scream and it tells you what time the buses are coming. I'm like, all right, I'll just go by the screen. So I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for the bus. Actually, I finished gambling early, sat in the lobby and the bus never showed up. I'm like, man, I'm getting sick of waiting for the bus. So I'm gonna go back in. Went back in, lost all my money. I was like, oh fuck, I was ahead before then. And then when I come back out, the whole bus is full. I'm like, what the fuck? I came out still like a half hour early. So I get on the bus and the whole bus boos me. I'm like, what, what? I'm here a half hour early. And they're like, no, you're not. You're an hour late. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Go in and look on the screen. It says what time the bus is here. Turns out the screen was wrong. <laughs> so everyone on the bus had to wait for like an hour for me to come back because I had left all my ID on the bus. And I guess they noticed that like, fuck, we can't leave this guy in another country. His passport's on the bus, right? <laughs> so I had a whole bunch of like 80 year old people just booing me and yelling at me. <laughs> He's like, what? You want to fight? <laughs> no, I didn't say that to the seniors. I actually apologized to him. I told him the story. I'm like, look, I didn't know what time the bus was leaving. I asked the driver. He told me to go in and look on the screen. It's like, you guys can go look in the screen right now. It says the bus isn't going to be here for a half hour. <laughs> so I don't know how the screen had the wrong time. Fuck, that was annoying. So only if the screen would have had the right time then I would have not lost all my money going back in because I would have just waited an extra 10 minutes. <laughs> but then I wouldn't have had this story for the show, so I guess it worked out in the end. <laughs> See, the Chinese farmer. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll post that link if I remember. 
All right, so I hope the Heat can come back and win the series. Oh, it'd be so nice to see LeBron lose. Maybe I gotta stop living in hate and just cheer for LeBron, then he'll lose. <laughs> it's usually with people I cheer for lose, so I gotta use reverse psychology here. I should have bet on LeBron James to win the playoffs, then he would lose. <laughs> No, as a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, like in Canada, I don't know if you guys heard, you probably have the joke. What is it? Hockey is Canada's national sport. And guess what? We haven't won it in like, I don't know, 30 years. So I was like, Jesus, it's like, can you imagine your country's national sport and you're like literally the worst country at it? It's like kind of like an embarrassment. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so I still cheer for the Leafs, even though that they're such an embarrassment, but I man, I'm definitely used to losing. <laughs> and the thing that makes me sad the most about hockey is they changed the whole sport. So now if the Leafs actually do win again, it won't even really count because hockey's not even hockey anymore. No body checking, no fighting. It's like fucking no danger at all in the sport. It used to be the most dangerous sport you could play. Maybe second to football. No, I think it would, hockey actually was way more dangerous than football. What am I talking about? Like football, they've always, I don't know, in the old days, did football players not wear helmets? I'm pretty sure they always wore helmets, didn't they? Because back in the day, hockey, you didn't wear the helmet and the puck. I don't know if anyone from other countries hasn't seen a hockey puck, like a real one. It's not soft, it's fucking rock hard. And not only is it rock hard, but they put it in the freezer too, to make it even harder. So it's like a solid fucking rock. <laughs> it's like bigger than your hand. <laughs> and then they would shoot it at like a hundred miles an hour at a person's face <laughs> without a helmet. <laughs> it's like literally every time you played hockey, you were having a chance that you could die. <laughs> pretty good chance too. <laughs> so many of the players actually did die. It's pretty sad really, but. I don't think actually, well, maybe a few died on the ice. I'm pretty sure most of them just died of their injuries after the games. I mean, you ever seen the, I think, what is it, Salming or something? One of the Toronto Maple Leaf players. I don't know how it happened. Maybe it was a skate injury, but he had his face almost cut right off. I was like, oh my God, that's gotta be the most gruesome fucking injury I've ever seen. He got his face cut off. And then they, they stitched it back onto him, but I was like, whoa. It's like, man, what a nightmare that must have been. <laughs> See, that's what I want to watch. <laughs> now, health-wise, I'm not doing the greatest today. Fuck. Wish I was feeling better. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this whole sober October thing. That's like basically what killed my progress last time. As soon as I got really bad rough shape, I needed to fall back onto weed to try to overcome the pain. Or maybe I'll just take ibuprofen, but I probably shouldn't. Yeah, so I was so happy today actually that my positive outlook on life has improved with a little bit of sobriety. And not only that, but I got my Intellivision Amico apology into Tommy Tellerico. Not only did he actually read it on the air, but he accepted it and everything. I was like, wow. What a nice guy. I really gotta stop being so critical of what he works on, but you know, the main reason I was critical of Tommy is you know how some people, when you're like really encouraged and nice to them and baby them, they don't really do so good. But if you're like, hey, you can't do it, you're a loser. Then they hear that, they're like, fuck you, I'll do it. <laughs> so that's the kind of type of behavior I seen from Tommy. So I was like, man, if I ream him out a little bit and say he can't do something, maybe he'll take that as motivation and make the product even better. Cause that's actually what I want. I want to buy the Amico. I wish it was cheaper. <laughs> Fuck, is it expensive? I'm like looking at, do I want a fucking new Xbox or do I want the Amico? It's like, ah. Uh -huh. Oh, what the hell? We're in the middle of the match and it disconnected. Will the match just keep going? And then how does this work? If I had to guess, I gotta reload, yeah. Oh yeah, guys, if you ever noticed, I don't know if this is true or not, 
But you know when you're loading blue stacks like this and it gets really slow? I'll show you one of the tricks I was doing. Uh, where is it? Hopefully no boobs on the screen. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Man, I don't know some of the boobs I've been seeing lately. Oh, I gotta get out more. <laughs> yeah, if you turn on the echo mode while it's loading, I find it loads a little bit quicker. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. But we'll, we'll try it. I won't leave it here the whole time. But normally this screen will take like 10 minutes for me to load. But when I change it to echo mode, I notice I can get it down to like 2 or 3 minutes. So yeah, I don't know if anyone else notices that on their computer, but I'll be right back once it loads. Alright, I almost forgot. While well, that loads, might as well just do the Bitcoin spin right now. So yeah, guys, if anyone wasn't watching the show yesterday, or maybe wasn't on the Entropia streams, I reached the 30,000 Satoshi goal yesterday. So, now I'm at 30,000, one, what, 31,585. Holy shit, it's a number so high I can barely even say it. <laughs> All right, 31,604. Woohoo! And now, if anyone's wondering why I'm so excited about the 30,000 goal, if you go up here and you click earn, now I'm earning 4% interest, or 4.8 or 0.8, because as once you reach the 30,000 goal, then they start paying you the interest. And obviously, this interest is fucking minuscule, like hardly anything, but I'm not really caring about the value. I just like to see it going up, so I'm like, this is pretty sweet. Now it goes up and I don't even have to play it. So like I could basically walk away, come back a year from now, and then seeing that it's gone up a thousand, right? A thousand Satoshi. It's not very much, but obviously when I get this Satoshi amount a lot higher, then the interest will be greater and it's daily compounding. So I don't have to wait a long time for it to start adding it. It'll just do it right that same day. So big shout out to everyone's helping with Patreon. I love you guys. And I also love uh, the people helping with Bitcoin. It's really sweet of you. All right, on the other thing I wanted to get caught up with, I'll just pause it for a sec. Yeah, geez, so much for echo mode speeding this up. <laughs> it's actually taking longer now. But anyways, oh yeah, one other thing. All right, what I was doing is I finally got my electric, my electric scale going again ordered a new one that actually works oh you fucking son of a bitch why did it go to this screen and show all my private information you fucking son of a whore fucking stupid app where, where did this come from mm, you fucker ah oh, there it is okay relax relax <laughs> all right so today i actually had a point one gain but i actually was uh chugging a lot of fluids and you don't want to get yourself dehydrated so yeah i've got all these different goals the body weight let's see what i have to get down to i have to reach 194 before i'm in normal so that's my main goal but eventually i'd like to get down to my regular fighting weight 160 ish body mass index i'm in the yellow body fat i'm just under obese which is pretty sweet, but I'm surprised because normally I'm obese at this weight, so I think I put on extra muscle, which is countering it. So the fat-free body weight, it says that I should weigh 162.8 pounds if I have no fat. Which is kind of hard to believe because my goal is 165, so that sounds a little bit weird. Alright, my skin fat is still really high. <laughs> And I noticed that too, I had the fat face going really bad for a while there because I was going eating way too much. So I got to get that back down. Doesn't really tell you how, how far you have to go, but man. All right, my organ fat is acceptable, but a little bit on the high side. And that's actually good if you wanted to become vegan for a while. Because I don't know if anyone's realized that when vegans are bragging that they can go a really long time with being vegan, it's because their organ fat high or, or was really high before they went vegan. So when they're not getting all their nutrients, they'll start consuming their organ fat. So you can actually survive on your organ fat for quite a while. I think some people even pull it off for years. Surprising, but that organ fat must be like really high in nutrients or something. All right, so yeah, not that I'm offering medical advice, it's just my opinions from personal experience. All right, body water. Yeah, I was thinking I'm a little bit thirsty, so I could chug a little bit more. 
Skeletal muscle, this is one I always have issues with, which is really fucked. It says I'm almost at low. And I asked my doctor about it, and he said it's because I have the hyperflexibility condition. So you actually have a little bit less muscle around your, you know, your bones. And it makes you more flexible, but yeah, that, that's concerning because I don't want to be low in that. doesn't sound good. Yeah, and see, here's the other problem. It's like, isn't it weird that I'm low in skeletal muscle, but the rest of the muscle, I'm actually on the high end, almost too high. <laughs> it says for <laughs> low, I'd be at 100, so I'm 30 pounds more muscle than I would be if I was on the low side. Now, that makes sense, because I do work out every day for like years on end, so I should have a decent amount of muscle. Not like Arnold Schwarzenegger or anything, but I'm definitely not skinny in muscle. Right, bone mass is average. I'd like to get that higher, so I gotta start consuming more of the, what is it, the magnesium. Protein. Yeah, it says I'm high on protein, and that makes sense, because I've been fucking plowing protein like meat like crazy the past few weeks. After that stomach problem, I just started like binging on fucking meat to see if I could cure it. <laughs> Right, the metabolic rate, it's because I do a lot of athletic stuff, like I fucking bike like crazy sometimes, and then all the exercise, so I figured that my metabolism should be high. If it was low, that'd be weird, because I, with all that exercise, all right, the age thing, it says I'm okay, but I'd like to get that lower, because it says you're supposed to be two-thirds of your actual age, and I'm 40, so if it's 41, yeah, so I got to get it lower. Right, so see what measurements. No, I guess it didn't matter. The other thing that I showed, yeah, it's only a slight increase. So you can track the progress of each of these things while it's going. And if anyone wants to know what this scale is, just put a comment in the chat. If everyone already knows, I won't bother sharing the brand. I don't actually have any affiliation with it, so I've got no reason really at this point to promote it. Okay, so let's get back to some clone evolution. The game is loaded. Woohoo! Now, sorry guys if I bore you guys with the diet stuff, but really my uh, my fucking willpower isn't what it used to be. So with you guys watching my progress, it's actually going to help me a, a great deal. So I hope you don't mind that. And if you do, you can just skip ahead to that part in the show. I don't mind if you skip parts, because I'm sure I do lots of boring parts that people are sick of. I don't get it. I'm trying to close something and it's saying that it's already closed, but it can't be because it's fucking still broadcasting. Oh well, whatever. Right, back to clone evolution. Let's see if I can get some fire heroes going. Oh fuck, it's still in echo mode. That's one thing I noticed about echo mode. Does anyone else notice this? It makes it all laggy. So I was like, isn't it supposed to run better on echo mode? Or maybe it just lowers the graphical quality, and then that's how it's making it economical, or... I don't know. Right, I'm definitely not going to be playing that thing that crashes me every time. What was that? That was the one guild thing, right? Alright, beat that, beat that. Come on, out of there. I gotta check the daily tasks. I can't remember what I've all completed because I had to restart the show so many times. Or the game. Now Tommy Tellerico is a big live special coming up for the Amico. So I'll try to advertise it for him a little. Pay him back for all the negative comments I was saying. Yeah, and it's on October the 10th. So I think he said that's next Saturday. And he was saying it was like 10-10 his time. But he's in California, so that's like kind of a nightmare for people on the East Coast. I'm gonna have to wake up like 6 a.m. on a Saturday in order to watch this because it starts at 7 something. I think was it 7.10? But maybe I'll just pull an all-nighter. We'll see. Or maybe I'll try to get back on the early morning routine. Yeah, I probably should do that instead. <laughs> pull an all-nighter. Alright, let's do the arena challenges quick, see if we can finish those. Yeah, I can't remember what he said was coming up in the special. I think he gave us a bit of details on it, but if I had to guess, it's going to be good. Like, if you like the old Electronic Playground show, oh yeah, I keep forgetting. All you guys are such young viewers that you've probably never even seen Electric Playground before, or reviews on the run. 
Maybe if you guys could put comments about that. Has anyone seen that show or even heard about it? That's funny. I don't recall ever hitting the reward button before. Didn't even know what that did. <laughs> now, if people are wondering why I fight the easiest battles just to finish it quick, finishing quick is my specialty. Link below. <laughs> no, it's because I just want the tokens. I don't really care about the points. Maybe I should be caring about the points. I think you get better rewards for it or something, but I don't know. It's just the way I am. If I was doing everything right, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be still in my mom's basement almost 50, right? <laughs> nah, I should stop being so harsh on myself. I did move out for quite a few years, almost 10 years, but had to move back with the economic times. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. No, who knows? Maybe we can make living in your mom's basement cool again. Make it great again. <laughs> if it was ever great. <laughs> Come on, let me climb. <laughs> Limited vent. See what we got. You know what I was thinking? I stopped using the yo 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 and I've got less comments in my chat. So I'm like, man, should I start yo yo yoing again? <laughs> no, I don't want to piss people off, but it is nice to get comments in the chat, guys, one way or the other, so. You can add a couple comments, it's great. I know a lot of people have been lately, so I appreciate it. Now, it's just some days I worry about YouTube because, like I always thought I had alternatives for other platforms, but then I started to realize that all the other platforms are actually way worse than YouTube. I was gonna switch to BitChute, and then I found out BitChute is a fucking giant scam. Couldn't even believe it. I had all these people promoting it, saying, oh, it's, all, it's great, it's free, sensor free and free to, to advertise or free to do everything on it then I realized no it's not free and they 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 took the donations for the bit shoot and guess what they did they went and bought a fucking patent for their fucking logos and stuff so now if you try to like say I'm doing a bit shoot show and you want to put the bit shoot logo you can't it's fucking patent they use the goddamn donation money to help sue people the people that are fucking creating so I'm like fuck bit shoot Goddamn bastards. Like, I get it that you want to have a logo and you want to trademark it or whatever, but what the fuck? Do it with, like, a big company or do it with your own money. Don't fuck take crowdfunding to make something free and then use it to fucking make it hinder the fucking service. Like, I don't want extra fucking copyright strikes. I don't want to be paying for that shit. Fuck. <laughs> Come on, positive, positive. Yeah, so I'm going to have to try to be nicer to YouTube and make sure I don't fuck it over because if YouTube goes down the tubes for me, well, I guess I'll have to go to BitChute, but I'm not looking forward to BitChute like I used to. And how I came to this realization, if people are wondering, same thing with Disclose TV. Disclose TV is this great paranormal thing. I was like, great, this alternative site to YouTube, I can put stuff there that normally YouTube wouldn't allow be copyright free, don't have to worry about fucking strikes or anything or getting sued. Guess what happened when I signed up for fucking Disclosed TV? Oh yeah, I did s scan them up already. I just didn't consume them. I'm not so convinced that Harsh Assassin is going to be a good red hero. Like I've been fighting her like as a red and she's easy to beat. So I was thinking, God, why am I going to make Harsh Assassin red? Because she has big health? I don't know, some people are telling me that Harsh Assassin was really good. I'm just not buying it anymore. Like, maybe she is, and I just haven't seen it yet, any evidence, but... Sure doesn't look like it to me at this point. Holy, two levels. I don't get it. Every time I give robots to Trump, he goes up in levels so fast. And then if I give the same robots to someone else takes like a hundred times more and barely goes up any. So I don't get it. Anyone else notice that? Trump just flies up in levels. Like I can just give Trump a few levels and boost him up to like max level easy. If I wanted to max Alex, it would take fucking all my robots and he still wouldn't reach it. So maybe Trump has some sort of ability that he levels up faster. I didn't think that was possible. 
Yeah, so maybe Tommy's going to show off the baseball stuff. He said he was going to wait for the All-Star game, but maybe he's going to do it now. God, I hope so. Because that was my major concern. Every game he kept showing on the Miko, I was like, dear God, these are like the worst games I've ever seen. But if he has this new cool baseball game and it's actually good, woohoo, that'll be good. All right, I got to try to think here. What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was going to try to make some red heroes. Come on, red. Oh. It was weird. For the longest time, I hardly had any of the chaos elements. Now that's all they give me. Chaos over and over again. Well, yeah, I got the third Omnioji. So who am I away from Omnioji? Is that who I'm working on? Let me check. No, it wasn't for Omnioji. Who else could it have been? Oh yeah, Hanzo. So I need two extra fire heroes for Hanzo. I could consume her and him. Alright, so let's just do that. But I was thinking, God, I needed them for some other hero. Maybe I shouldn't consume them. Ah, let's just fucking do it. I'll make another one. Alright, so let's make, let's make a red or gold Hanzo today. There he is. So today's cover, I'll have something cool. Oh yeah, I'll have to go can clone up the next Hanzo. Ah, oh, it's so nice to be hot. I don't know, like when I wasn't eating much, my fucking body temperature is just plummeting. Couldn't get warm to save my life. Even worked out, did 100 sit-ups, didn't even break a sweat. I was like, what the fuck? Normally when I do 100 sit-ups, I'm like pouring sweat. <laughs> well, I guess it was because when I was doing 100 sit-ups, it was usually in a boiling hot heat wave. So that'll make you sweat a little. <laughs> uh, let's get a quick message from the sponsor before we clone up Hanzo. Today's Hanzo clone was brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. Woo! Alright, welcome back everyone. Alright, did I clone up Hanzo? I think I did. No, like did I make the small one so that I can make the red one now or gold? Let's try. Fuck, I'm short the little dipper too. So if I use this little dipper guy, I'm going to have to get another copy of him. He's usually a common ingredient. Oh, don't tell me. Alright. I was going to say, did I fuck up another thing? <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah, I get Obama all the time, so I should use him. And I also get this guy all the time, so we'll use him. God, I'm hoping not wasting someone I need. Should I waste this guy? I think he's less common. Yeah, let's waste him. Or more common, not less. Alright, let's hope for the best. Alright, we got the, the gold Hanzo. Isn't that weird? <laughs> See, I never expected to see Gold Hanzo on my team. Where is he? Oh yeah, because he can't upgrade past Gold, that's why. Alright, so now I have to focus on Omni OG. And... Need one of her. I need Das Hitler. So yeah, I think I already have her, let me check. Or I might just have to buy her from the store. Yeah, I don't have any copies of her. So let's see, how much do I need to save up to buy her? Hmm, there it is. Alright, so I need 4,000 to buy her. Oh yeah, I've got plenty. 
so I can afford a copy of her. That's good. Oh, good, I consumed that guy, so I can get more of him, no problem. That's good. A lot of good shit happening these days. That's why I gotta figure, like, a lot of times I was down in the dumps this week, because the sobriety was kind of a little bit difficult, but now some things are starting to go positive, so... See, when you're going through hard times, what do they say? It's like you have to to put up with a little bit of bullshit for a while, but in the end, you can fucking get some luck, or the hard work will pay off, the endurance, the no pain, no gain. Constantly torture yourself. Your life will be wonderful one day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's the ticket. Right, so what do we got left? 10 minutes? Let's see, what else do I have time for? I was going to buy her. Then let's see, what else do I need? Yeah, that's going to be so weird. Once Omniogi's done, so I got her, those two. So really, I'm just a Hitler away from a fucking Red Samson. Man, I wish I could just buy Hitler, but... It's annoying too, because I have him on the casino. So all I have to do is land him, boom, Red Samson. Man, I wish I could get that. It's good that I have Hitler on there and that one hero's already gone though, so it shouldn't take too long. Omni OG. I kind of like that name now. It's like I never heard it before Clone Evolution, now it's rolling off my tongue a little better. People are probably laughing that it, or they can say the name properly. <laughs> it's like you're butchering the name and you're thinking you're saying it good. <laughs> You know what I think it is? I used to play a lot of Risk when I was growing up, like the board game Risk, but I played it on video games like PlayStation, PlayStation 1, Sega Genesis, PS2, PS3, PS4, and I always loved playing Risk, and one of the most tactical things that Risk teaches you is to always try to look at things from your opponent's perspective. So it's like, say I was trying to do a move in a, in a big war, I would always like think what is my opponent going to do the next turn so it's like you're always like trying to relate to what other people are thinking and then I, that strategy sort of like bled off into my regular life where every time there's some horrible like situation that I have to defeat or just a challenging situation that tends to be my strategy it's like instead of arguing with people all the time I'll try to see things from their perspective I know it's challenging a lot of times, but man, if you can get good at it, it helps your life a lot. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like a psychopath trait too. I don't know. There was that one board game. I forget what it's called, but it's the one where you have to guess what other people are thinking. <laughs> and it was pretty funny because I was playing it with some of my friends and they're like starting to get freaked out because they're like, how can you win every round? It's like, do you know what we're thinking? It's like, it's like, no, I'm just guessing what you're thinking. And it's like, I'm not psychic or something. <laughs> it was funny, like the whole night, it was like going to the point where I was like winning, 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 winning. And I'm like, maybe I should lose a few on purpose. So people aren't like, how does he know what we're thinking? <laughs> Yeah, if anyone knows the game of that, or the name of that board game, maybe I'll try looking it up, but probably not. <laughs> now, I haven't burned any of these for a while, because I got all this new room in my team. But I guess I should do it now, because there's probably a few that have built up. Now, I was almost tempted to message Clone Evolution support, and just ask them if I used to have two Crime Fighter fragments, and somehow I lost one. Would they even respond? Probably not, right? They'd be like, we don't care. <laughs> now, I don't want to waste their time either. They might not even be able to look it up. Holy blues. I got the blues. <laughs> no, I'm actually really starting to look forward to November 2nd. Because November 1st, I plan to still do the sobriety thing. Alright, we got enough for a blue upgrade. 
But man, when I vaporize again, I'm probably going to get some booze too and just get fucking wasted. <laughs> hmm. Hey, what was I doing? Oh yeah, this. Right, so I can choose between extra dodge or hit. And I think I'll go with hit because who, oh yeah, he could use a little bit of dodge. I was thinking Uncle Joe. Yeah, let's give him a little dodge. Because really no one in my blue team even hits anyone with attacks, so why do I care if they have extra accuracy? It's not like my healing misses. Huh. Alright, so they still want me to do some expeditions. And the ordinary clone. And yeah, we're pretty much finished for today. Now I've been having a little bit of luck with the expedition lately. I noticed they haven't been getting me to fight like a whole team of reds anymore. I don't know why that kept happening. For like a couple weeks there, every time I played the expedition, sometimes I'd only get like one or two battles in. It'd be a whole team of reds. I'm like, what the fuck? How am I supposed to beat these people? But now they've made it more reasonable to the point where it's almost too easy. I win every time again. Maybe they were trying to balance it, eh? They're making it harder or easier seeing what the players reacted to it. Or maybe it's the pay to win thing. Once you pay to win, they make it easier. <laughs> All right, let's skip these. I don't really think they're going to kill me at any point this early on. Man, a horrible nightmare. Like, you know, I told you about prof prophetic dreams that I usually have. And one of the horrible nightmares I had was my pot plants dying. <laughs> I don't think it really happened. Well, I better go fucking take a better look. Jesus. But no, it's funny in my dream, it's like I went into my greenhouse and all the plants had died. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> but they're almost done anyway, so I guess if they died, I could just pick them and dry them. But it might lower the quality of the weed if it's kind of like dead weed. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's had a pot plant that died from frost before, but it's pretty scary. Like, it's like normally when you dry a pot plant, it just dries and it takes days and days and days. But it was weird. The one time when my plants got frost, they were like dead the next day. And like they wilted to all brown. So they didn't like turn like just dry and nice and green. They like went bad, died. I was like, oh, that really sucked. And we're getting like winter temperatures already and they're sativa plants that I'm growing. So they're, they're very intolerable to colder temperatures. Weed in general doesn't like the cold, but or cannabis, but sativa hates it even worse. Yeah, see, look, almost all the heroes I'm fighting are purple. So it's like, this is way easier. <laughs> At this point before, I was like fighting three reds. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I just had a bad film build up on my teeth. You really hate that when you can feel the fuzz. Yeah, it's getting close to fucking dentist time again. God. I don't know how I'm gonna pull this dentist thing off. So worried because my uncle, if I catch something at the dentist and then give it to him. But it is getting close to the year mark since I've been to the dentist, so I really shouldn't put it off too much longer. Or else I'm going to end up with fucking thousands in dentist bills. Oh god. I know some people, like, when they get their teeth bad, they just get them pulled. But it's like I wore braces when I was a kid and I fucking spent so much money on my teeth that it's like it seems like such a waste to let them just get pulled. So I'll spend the extra money to fix them, but holy, the bills are so expensive. I think last year I spent close to like $3,000 on dentist bills. It's fucking crazy. Great dentist though. So I kind of cheat when it comes to the dentist. I don't know if anyone else has done this, but I have like three dentists. <laughs> and it's funny too, because they always bitch about it. They're like, you shouldn't be seeing more than one dentist. 
And I don't have the heart to tell them like, well, each dentist is good at one thing and better at others than the other ones. So this one dentist I go to, he's got the best prices. It's actually a family member of mine. And he's from Mexico and it's like his whole office, everyone basically speaks, uh, what is it, Spanish? But they speak English when I'm in there, so it's kind of nice. Or most of the, well, some of the time they speak English. I'm starting to get a little better at Spanish, so I understand some of it if they talk slow. But when you talk fast, I can't understand it. I don't know what it is. Like when people talk fast in another language, I just can't hear where the words end and begin. But when someone talks slow, then I can hear the ending, then it makes it easier to understand. Because it sort of just sounds like one long word instead of just like you can hear the breaks and decide, decipher each word. Yeah, and then my other, de yeah, the dentist that's from Mexico, he gives me great deals. But the only issue I got with his dental service is his x-rays aren't the greatest. His x-ray machines from like the 70s. So it's like anytime I want dental x-rays, I'm like, sorry man, I'm not going to get the x-rays. And then meanwhile, I go to the other dentist and get them because they have a fucking amazing x-ray. Like at one time, I decided to try a brand new dentist office, like one that just got built and opened. Because I wanted to see what their x-ray machine was like. Holy shit. It's like the, the difference in x-rays is fucking unreal. Like the, the 70s dentist x-rays, you can barely even tell what's a tooth. It just looks like blurry shit, right? And then my new dentist, his x-ray, not only can you see everything crystal clear, it's like you can see what each tooth is easily, but he can zoom in. And I was like, what? And it's like he starts zooming in. He's like, look, I can even show you hairline fractures in your tooth. I'm like, holy shit, right? My other, uh, what is it, a dentist from Mexico, he can never find the hairline fractures because he has that really shitty x-ray. But he just goes on the procedure like, hey, if you feel a cavity, tell me where it is, I'll fill it. So that's okay, but like, sometimes I want like actual real x-rays just to make sure. <laughs> and then the third dentist I have is like one like across the street from my house. So if I ever need like quick dental work, I can go to that dentist. And it's funny too, like every time I keep switching dentists, they always get mad. They're like, stop going to the, their offices. You're only supposed to have one dentist. I'm like, well, where does it say that in the rule book, right? We're only allowed one dentist. <laughs> It's like, as long as I'm paying you guys, I don't understand the problem here. <laughs> now, I think what it is, is they want to get the money for the x-rays too, probably, right? Because what I think what it is, is the dentist will give you deals on certain things and then make it up in others. So maybe they're giving me a deal on something and then expecting that I'm getting the x-ray. But then when I don't get the x-ray, they're like, shit, now they just lost out on the profit they could have got. Oh boy, come on stomach, you can make it. <laughs> oh yeah, and then I shared a video about my Uncle Pete today. I know a lot of people keep asking me like, man, why are you never visiting? Why are you never coming over? Why are you neglecting everyone? And then I tell them that my uncle's in bad shape and they just go, oh, he's not really that bad, right? So it's like, just to try to settle some of it, I'm like, man, I'm gonna post a video of how bad my uncle really is. I asked him, it's fine for him to post it. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a graphic video. Well, it's, it's kind of saddening really because it shows me carrying my uncle to the washroom and how rough a shape he is. He can barely even move, right? So yeah, it really makes me sad too because just like a year ago this time, he was running around playing, like having fun and now he's almost completely paralyzed. Really sucks. But I try not to get too down the dumps about it because really in his condition, like he was only supposed to live to be 30 as doctor gave him and he's almost 60. So he's pretty much doubled the life expectancy. I bet you he outlived the doctor that said that, <laughs> that he was going to die soon. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, that's mean. But <laughs> No, so really, and he's like the oldest person in his like school for Down syndrome people, so... And he was like the oldest by a long shot, right? Like at least 20 years older than the next one. So everyone was kind of like, man, how long is he really going to live for? This is amazing. Now, I think the thing that saved my uncle is when my grandpa used to still look after him. 
he got tired of like looking after him a lot so he, he got him a home gym and he let him stay in the basement like have his own his own room basically was the basement and my uncle Pete he would just work out all day every day and watch wrestling it's like he was a big wrestling addict like the WWE or WWF back when he used to watch it nowadays he watches hockey because wrestling freaks him out he's got like the dementia part where he sees people fighting he starts getting really upset which is so weird, eh? You think you could watch wrestling your whole life, and then once you get dementia, it's like you, f you can't watch it anymore. Yeah, so guys, don't be too upset. I'm not doing it for pity or anything. I'm just trying to show people, it's like, hey, if you have to do, like, personal support worker for your family, it is possible. Like, man, when I first started, there was no way I could lift my uncle like that. And then after months and months of practicing, at least I got better at it. And people are like, oh, you're such a saint for looking after your uncle. It's like, I don't want to take that responsibility either. Because what really happened was we were actually going to put my uncle in a home. We, Our whole family decided he was too much work. We couldn't handle him anymore. So we actually made the call to put him in a government home and everything. Which is really sad, right? But it's kind of like the pandemic came right at the right time for our family because it forced us to look after him because the government called us back and said, Yep, the way this pandemic's going, you're not getting any help for your uncle anytime soon. So we're like, holy shit, we're going to have to learn to look after him. And we did. So I'll just try to put that video out there. If anyone's thinking, holy shit, such a daunting task to do caregiver work, don't give up. You'd be surprised what you can do when you're in a pinch. All right. Yeah, so let's wrap this up. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We got, what was it, the gold Hanzo today. It's tempting to try him out in a fight, right? Let's see what he looks like. I haven't even looked at him yet. I guess I've seen him before and other people have him. So I got the gold Hanzo. I don't really see anyone using him for fighting very often. Oh, excuse me. So I'm assuming he's not very good and I'll just use him to upgrade Samson. If anyone in the chat wants to post if there's any reason why I should keep Hanzo and not use him to make Red Samson, please let me know. But I'm pretty sure Red Samson's the way to go. Who does Samson turn into? I gotta check that out. Is this Samson? I'll have to check the Darwin machine to figure it out. Now I was thinking if I could find out who Samson is, that'd be great. Something to look forward to, or avoid, <laughs> depending if it's good or not. Alright, so that's not Samson, it's not the fat pig. It's not this guy. Not her. Is this Samson? Oh, Samson turns into this guy. Ah. So that's who I should have picked on my team for the other thing, for what was it called? Uh, the Abyss. I could have had Samson, fuck. All right, so that's that's pretty cool. We got something to look forward to. Hopefully tomorrow's episode, I'll get some luck with the casino, land Hitler. And who, what, isn't Hitler the best luck ever? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> it's horrible, horrible. All right, Patreon. Big thanks to the people helping with that. Society6, Swagbox, GameKit, Hido, Bitcoin, and the Virtual Mate Sex Machine for adults and men only. Ladies need a sex machine. They obviously know who they can call. <laughs> Just kidding, but unless you want to get let down. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. What else was there? Hmm. Let's see. If you happen to get... Yeah, let's do it. Uh, gold... Yeah, Gold Hanzo. If you happen to get the Gold Hanzo in your vaporizer and it tastes like shit, then give the show a dislike. But if that doesn't happen, you can help with the like. I really appreciate it. And yeah, if you guys have any time, maybe if you could do something nice for me, is go on to some of the Intellivision Amico video pages or videos on YouTube and just put something like Leland's sent me. <laughs> And I like the Amico, or it looks good, or you can give your honest opinion, but just try to keep it a little positive if you can. I know some of the games look pretty bad right now, but 
I think on the 10th, Tommy's going to have some footage of really good games. Yeah, just hearing him today talk live and everything, getting to apologize to him, man, that helped cheer me up. So yeah, I'm hoping that Tommy's doing better. I hope I didn't bring him down with that, but... Yeah, sometimes being too negative is a little bit much, but maybe there'll be some good that comes out of it. He'll take some of the shit I said about the Amico that was a little bit harsh, and maybe he'll try to upgrade the system. Maybe? <laughs> That'd be sweet. Alright, so take care, everyone. Um, yeah, make sure you never buy the products from my sponsor, because it will ruin your life. Bye for now. Fuck, I forget the video I was going to link. Maybe I'll, I'll link the, uh, the Amico one. Here's three videos, actually two, and a subscribe.